Why would the God of all power and might work so hard to keep this battle within you going, namely flesh and spirit, when he has the power to eliminate the battle? You know, I might as well ask this question as long as I'm at it. I didn't plan on this because this is a wild question. It's a wild belief that I have. I'm going to lay it on you here because that's what I do. Did you know that the presence of evil in the world... Now, this is a macrocosmic view. Talk, I'm going to talk about the presence of evil in your life in a second. Let's talk about the presence of evil in the world. People say, that how can there be a God with evil in the world? I say this to you. If there weren't a God, there would not be evil in the world. Because God, did you get that? If there weren't a God, there would not be evil in the world. The presence of evil, the presence of evil in the world is, pres is proof of the presence of God. For one thing, I got two things here. This is the one thing. God is light, God is love, God is goodness, God is spirit, and he emanates crazily. He's everywhere. That's number one. Number two, evil is self-destructive. Evil eats itself. Evil is so evil that it can't exist apart from an outside force. You think, uh, not, not you, Christians think God has to work hard to fight evil. God is constantly wrestling with the evil powers of the world. No, you know what God is doing? He's working hard keeping evil around. You know how much, you know, you know, you know how difficult it is to keep evil from eating itself? To keep evil from completely blowing up and disappearing God has to work hard to keep it around to keep himself contained I'm amazed even in Florida sometimes at, at the clouds Ohio Pennsylvania that's another matter but God really has to work hard to keep that beautiful ball of hydrogen from showing up much I'll just say in Ohio and Pennsylvania has to work hard to dial back his glory and that's what God's doing now in the world he's dialing it back he's holding the reins of the stallion keeping it from charging forward to take over everything with bounty and goodness and love and he sends those damn clouds to hide the sun and in Pennsylvania he had a safety layer of clouds in case the first layer by some freak of meteorological circumstance went away there was a safety layer above that layer that kept the sun from view. This is the work of God. I'm not altogether happy about it. I've often told you that. Just because I believe that God is behind evil such as clouds doesn't mean I like it. I don't. So God has to work hard to keep his glory at bay. And I remind you of Jesus Christ who when he went to the tomb of Lazarus called out the name of Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Because if he had simply said, come forth, every tomb on the earth would have emptied. This is the power of God in Christ. He only wants one guy raised at this time. So he has to say, Lazarus, whatever his last name was, Lazarus Smith, come forth. Not We don't want Lazarus Jones, Lazarus Johnson, they're staying in the tombs. We want Lazarus, Lazarus Smith. That's the only guy. Very specific. Jesus, looking for his disciples in the Sea of Galilee, has to contain himself, picking only 12. Don't you think he has the power to pick the whole world and change everybody at once? Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Peter goes to pick up a sword to defend him. Oh, great, Peter. Don't you think I could call on 10 legions of messengers to deliver me if I wanted to? Jesus Christ, when he was on earth, had the powers of heaven at his disposal. And yet, contained, contained, held back, 
The rain's held tight, not coming forth, and there's a reason for it. Oh, well, the, the, the reason for it is we need this experience of evil to humble us. Ecclesiastes, I just had it, what, 113? It is an experience of evil God has given to the sons of humanity to humble them by it. Oh, that's a personal application. I'm not quite there yet. Satan is bound in the submerged chaos, which is somewhere near New Jersey, I think, South Jersey, for 1,000 years. And it's very easy. We don't read of any wrestling match. We don't read of a struggle. It just simply says, and Satan was bound for 1,000 years. Oi, why didn't you do that in the Garden of Eden? Huh, if it's so easy. Well, because needs, God needs Satan to oppose him so that this entire drama of contrasts between good and evil can be experienced by human beings with souls, with five senses, that we can understand God through this wrestling match. Now to a personal level. Why would God cause the flesh and the spirit, as I told you yesterday, to continually oppose each other. Well, lest you should do whatever you may want. This works both ways, as I said yesterday. Lest you should do all the evil that you want. And I know you. You want to do a lot of evil. I know you. Or lest you should do all the good that you want. God doesn't want you to do that either. And I know you have a lot of good things you want to do. But for whatever reason, you don't do it. Let's look at that for a second. You put it off. Um, let me speak for myself. You're, maybe, I'm a procrastinator. I have lots of great intentions, but I procrastinate, uh, and I don't do them. Should mail somebody a card, you know, to to make them feel better. And I just keep putting it off. Why? Because the flesh is lusting against the spirit. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Why didn't I think of that verse yesterday? That's right, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Then why is the flesh in there? If I didn't have the flesh, I wouldn't be weak. Exactly. God's smarter than you. He put the flesh in there to make you weak. Because when we are weak, then we are powerful. That's what Paul said. So weakness is a necessity for creatures that must learn to rely on God and not on their own morality. Not on the strength of their own will. Oh, I decided to send that card and I did it. That's weird. How did that happen? Yeah, how did that happen? But instead, no. You put it off. You have know, all kinds of great ideas, great things you want to do, but ah, my favorite TV show's coming on. Whatever thing in the flesh rises up and keeps you from doing the good that you want, that's necessary. Now, I'm, I'm going to still implore you to do the right thing, but I'm telling you, the flesh opposes the spirit to keep you from doing all the good that you want to do as well. Why is that? Uh, I'll tell you why. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Now, we have this treasure. What treasure? Oh, okay. Let me get to this treasure first. Here's the treasure we have. Paul says this in verse 5 of 2 Corinthians 4. For we are not heralding ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, yet ourselves your slaves because of Jesus. For the God who says that out of darkness light shall be shining is he who shines in our hearts with a view toward the illumination of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now we have this treasure, the one I just read to you, the illumination of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Wow. We have that treasure in earthen vessels. Ah, oh, God, why did you do that? I hate my earthen vessels. I hate my earthen vessel. It's so, it's so earthen. That the transcendence of the power, this is also verse 7, may be of God and not of us. That the transcendence of the power, there's a certain power that comes from the realization of these things. The illumination of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. There's power in that. You have power. You don't even realize it. Again, if you had all this power at your disposal, at your fingertips... You'd be like um, Dr. Evil, you know. You'd be like Dr. Evil and you'd want to take over the world. But no, God doesn't let you do that. Because he purposely wants you to be humble. So we have what Ecclesiastes 1.13, if that's what the verse is. I'll put it here on the 
car cam video if that's not the verse. It isn't Ecclesiastes. It is an experience of evil. God has given active verb to the sons of humanity to humble them by it. That's what Paul's saying here in different words. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. That goes along with Solomon's experience of evil. That the transcendence of the power may be of God and not of us. That's humbling. Solomon says to humble us. Paul says that the transcendence of the power may be of God and not of us. Oh, I wanted it to be of me. But God doesn't want it to be of you. And so he keeps the flesh in there. He keeps evil in your life. It'd be easier for him just to bink, eliminate the flesh. That's how he would do it. Bink, it would be that quick, and that's what it would sound like. He could eliminate the evil in your life. Bink, that easy. Right? He could open up the storehouse of wealth and bring all kinds of money into your life. That'd be the simplest thing to do. All you got to do is, like, get out of the way and all these sunshine comes in thousand dollar bills fly down from heaven but no guys like oh, gotta keep these thousand dollar bills from this person gotta keep the clouds in the way so you don't feel happy all the time from the sunshine thank god that this crapola i'm oh, sorry i shouldn't have called it that this struggle is not going to last forever in fact it may not last for five minutes because hmm, this is a lesson and it's temporary the lesson is temporary but the benefits we get from the lesson will be aeonian and in fact, eternal.